Hello everyone, welcome to the Physiotherapy Tutorial channel. In the 10 minutes tutorial series, today we are going to talk about the most important connective tissue and its property, the fascia. So when the anatomist dissected this fascia system, it was revealed that the entire fascia is a continuous structure. Dr. Thomas Myers in United States has discovered till date 11 myofascial lines which were continuous with the other connective tissue. The one which we are showing you here is a superficial back line which is a continuous sheet from the ball of the great toe to the forehead on the posterior aspect of the body. So there are 11 such myofascial lines in a continuous form to perform its function. So fascia is a continuous structure. It is also responsible for compartmentalizing the entire human body system. Like whenever we mention the flexors or the extensor compartment in the anatomy, these division or the compartments are done by the layer of the fascia surrounding them. So fascia organizes the structures in the human body to maintain its shape and the functions. Like for example, a connective tissue like a muscle also have a facial sheet which envelops many fasciculi called the epimysium. Even the smallest structural and functional unit of the muscle that is the sarcomere has a layer of the fascia surrounding it called as the endomysium. Similarly, all the living connective tissues like tendon, nerves, blood vessel, ligaments have fascia surrounding it or the envelope which embeds all these structures. Like for example, a peripheral nerve has the outer covering surrounding it called as the epineurium. And the structural and functional unit of the nerve that is the neuron also has a facial sheet surrounding them called as the endoneurium. So basically all connective tissue either is connected by fascia or has fascia within them. Let's move to the next property of the fascia. Where exactly is the fascia present? So till date, scientists has discovered four types of fascia. The superficial, deep, the fascia surrounding the organs and around the brain that is the meninges. So fascia presence has been found everywhere in the body. Every living connective tissue space is filled up by fascia. So there is absolutely no empty spaces in the human body. Everything is filled up or covered by this particular connective tissue called as the fascia. Fascia also has a very unique property of being a viscoelastic structure. Now this elastic property within the fascia allows the human to enhance their performance and mobility and also responsible for the force transmission. So higher the viscosity, less elastic will be the tissue. So it is always advisable to warm up the fascia system before carrying out any form of strenuous exercises. Now to make this fascia more flexible, the fascia responds well with the slow dynamic stretches. So it is highly recommended to perform a slow dynamic movement or stretching exercises. Another unique property fascia has that it is highly adaptable to various environmental condition and state, whether internal or external stress or strain. Fascia is also a mechanosensitive structure. So any form of mechanical stimuli in the form of a hand or a device or a stainless steel instrument will help to target the fascia, deform or align it also helps to elongate the structure. Like muscle has its orientation from origin to insertion, fascia does not have any form of orientation. It is a directionless structure. So whichever form you want to mold this structure, 
fascia being highly adaptable, it will adapt to that particular new position or stretch. So that's the entire properties of fascia. Continuous structures, compartmentalize the system, fill up the empty spaces, being viscoelastic, highly adaptable, responsible to slow stretch, mechanosensitive structure, which is directionless. So in all, what you can do with the fascia is this particular fascia and its system can easily be stretched. You can also mobilize and elongate this particular fascia and you can also strengthen the fascia by using some assistive devices called as the dynamic cupping. So let's see how the fascia system being lined up. So you have a superficial layer of the skin, the epidermis and dermis. You have a superficial fascia which works in close relation to that of the skin responsible for thermal regulation and the circulatory system. Often covered by a subcutaneous fat that is the adipose tissue. Beneath that you will find a deep fascia which works in more close relationship to that of the muscle. Now separating the deep fascia and the muscle you have a substance called as the hyaluronic acid which is responsible for proper sliding and gliding of the connective tissues. So as discussed earlier in our lecture, there are four types of fascia, superficial, deep, visceral and men meningeal fascia. When you take a transverse section and take in relationship to that of the transverse process, anything anterior that is the anterior compartment is called as the hypaxial fascia and anything posterior surrounding the paraspinal is called as epaxial fascia. Fascia is also a sensory organ. Researchers has found many sensory mechanoreceptors present in the fascia in the form of Ruffini nerve endings responsible for the stabbing pain and pessinin corpuscle responsible for the deep pain in the patients. So fascia pain could either be a deep in case of chronic or it could be a stabbing kind of pain in case of any acute or chronic condition. Fascia is also connected well with the autonomous nervous system. So in case of fright and flight situations like our sympathetic nervous system or in case of parasympathetic nervous system, fascia responds well to both of this particular nervous system. Fascia has also been associated with the emotional component attached to that of the pain. The last property, fascia has been originated through a mesoderm layer in embryology. It's often constituent of the collagen type 1 and 3. And if you look at the cross section of the orientation of collagen fibers, it's oriented at 45 degrees. This particular collagen fibers responsible for maintaining the tensegrity between them, which helps them to make a highly tensile structure. Along with the collagen fibers, major part of fascia is made up of water. So these were the properties of the fascia. Revise them properly and hope you like this particular information. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel for more such interactive sessions.